My name's Jen and I'm in grade nine at the MSM Writers Club. Um, I joined at the start of grade eight under my sister's advice and I'm very glad for that. <laughs> so here's my piece for the, also for the improbable flavor prompt and my piece is called The Taste of Hope. When all seems lost, warmth blossoms, tasting of honey toasted by the summer sun. The taste swells around the tongue to tickle the taste buds and attract a smile. With this smile comes a sugary delight outflavoring the bitter taste of despair. So despair does slip away for the sweet taste of hope that comes with an even better aftertaste. Mm -hmm. Now I'd like to introduce Ella. five-line fiction in which you have to write a full story in five sentences. Uh, my piece is called Ragged Joy. Rubble shifted and rolled, click, 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 down the cloud-smothered mountain. Its lone peak stabbed the sky like a jagged and rusting knife into a pool of crystalline water. There was a flicker of movement, way up, through the fog and the tumble of ragged clouds. A man stood, his hands in the air, his billowing black hair whipping around his face to sting his wind-blown cheeks. His triumphant yells were consumed by the cloud. No one else could hear them, but they filled his lonely and struggling heart with a happiness that only comes with the greatest achievements. Mm. Uh, yeah, Rosie, yes, welcome you. Hi, I'm back again. Um, so I actually responded to a letter writing prompt on Write the World, and it helped me to voice something that um, I've, it's been very difficult to voice. So it's called, um, oh. thank you. So it's called, uh, To the Unknown Man I Love. Firstly, I love you. I hope you knew that. I never got to say it because I was too young or too shy, but I do. Secondly, I apologize for never getting to know you properly. A picture of you has formed in my mind from various stories said with a smile and passing thoughts that were whisked out of their mouths like smoke. I discovered more of your past from wise faces that sat around your coffin than any conversation we had. You were kind, gentle, and loving the center of the party, they would say. That much was evident from the tightly packed church that saw more tears than rain in a thunderstorm. Sure, I did see you, but I can't remember you, as the carelessness of childhood innocence has blurred my memory. But whenever I do happen upon your face in my mind, I can assure you that it's with a warm heart. Thirdly, I want you to know that I'll never forget the song you sang to me, the song that transcended phone lines and letters, the song that started every conversation between us the song that made me feel special. Your voice sounded as sweet as any angel the moment you started singing, even when your body was beginning to fade. I will never hear that song escape your lips with a beating heart, but trust me, I will never forget it. Lastly, I want to say goodbye. I never did get to say it, like many of us. I sent prayers to you, but I don't know if you received them, so hopefully this letter will do. Poppy, I never really knew you, but I will never forget you. But most of all, I'll never stop loving you. I hope one day when I have lived a life as full as yours, I will get to hear my song be sung by a real angel. Love from your posy, who, who will meet you in the moonlight and dance the night away. I now invite Sarah to come up and tell her, her piece. <laughs> My name is Sarah and I'm in grade 12. So this is my fifth year at Writers Club and I absolutely love it and I also love Write the World. Um, being a part of Write the World, uh, I've also gotten to partake in something really special. I was interviewed, which was such a great experience. Because um, being in Write the World, they give you a voice. They give young people a voice and they make you believe that 
you have this ability that you can be a writer? And that's one of the questions I got to answer. It was, how has belonging to this community changed the way you think about yourself as a writer? And I think the most important thing is that it's made me believe that I could be a writer. It's given me, it's given me that dream that it's something that I can reach now, like, like it's within my grasp. So that was such a great experience being part of that. And uh, I've also responded to many prompts over the, over the years now, and one I responded to is why I write. So this is called Finding the Words. I write because it reminds me that the world is bigger than myself. I write because it humbles me to tell someone else a story. I write because I discover things I never knew I could find. I write because thinking in poem stanzas has become a habit. I write because I don't know how to stop. I write because I don't want to stop. I write to find an outlet. I write to clear some space in my brimming, restless mind. I write to feel something. I write to understand the loud emotions I feel. I write to understand how the world can be so messy and beautiful. I write to understand how I can still be completely in love with it. So um, I'd just like to thank you all though for um, listening to all of us today because this was really a great experience for us that we get to be heard and that's something Right World's done and this is done today. It's given us a voice. And um, like we've heard earlier, if you want to hear our voices again, you can download the Arise My <laughs> and you will hear us all again, if that's something you'd want to do. And we'd also love to all thank Mrs. Bentley for... Yeah. She's really created this culture for us where we all feel comfortable to learn and share <coughs> and critique each other's work. And it's something really amazing, which I don't know if we ever could have found anywhere else. So thank you. Yeah. Um, I think one of the other things I, I think you've had the experience of today is it's a writing group, but it's so much more. And the girls are learning to have a voice, but to actually articulate their words. They're giving it life. They're giving words. It's like a miracle of creation. You actually hear and you feel. Now that doesn't happen on a page. That comes through that trans that translation. So I'd like to say thank you to my girls. It's been really wonderful watching some of them go from absolute silence for years to <laughs> having something to say every meeting, which is fantastic. <laughs> and it's also wonderful because what they've done, what, my, what the seniors have done particularly, is helped to keep that culture alive and keep it rich and to give the younger students the family they feel safe to, to share their words in and they do have a voice and they're beautiful and they're learning to speak and own it and that's what we're celebrating tonight so thank you very much